Well, this is an interesting development in the entire story of Corey Perry and the Chicago Blackhawks. We have ourselves a few tweets going over the updates in regards to Chicago and what's going down, because it turns out the NHL and NHLPA have reached a resolution on the Corey Perry contract termination by Chicago from earlier this season. Ultimately, there was no grievance filed on the matter. And some of the replies to this initial tweet, oh, all of this is a joke, he knew he was wrong and didn't want to fight it, yada, 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 there's a lot of stuff going on here. Essentially, what this means is the NHLPA, they had the opportunity to say to the NHL, hey, wait a minute, like, this is not right. The way Corey Perry was terminated by Chicago was not right. They had the opportunity to file a grievance, but they did not end up doing so. There instead was an outside resolution made by all the parties involved, and essentially, Corey Perry can go over to Edmonton, have a good time, and completely forget about the entire Chicago thing in the first place, right? So, Corey Perry, he's now an oiler. I mean, he's got 7 points, 20 games played, a lower point production than what he had with the Blackhawks, but that was kind of to be expected considering the fact that the Oilers are a much better team. But the very interesting part about this Corey Perry no grievance situation is what Frank Saravelli went out there and talked about afterwards. Take a look at this tweet over here. It sounds like there's a small salary cap charge coming for the Blackhawks as a result of the settlement between Chicago, Corey Perry, the NHL, and NHLPA after what Perry's camp alleged was an improper contract termination. Rather than filing a grievance, a financial resolution was reached. And so now, essentially what's happening here is, based off of the language of this tweet, which again, if you think that I'm wrong in this assessment, you could go out there and correct me in the comments. I'm really just a fan going out there and reacting to what I'm seeing. But from the way it's phrased right here, it appears that because the Chicago Blackhawks and the Corey Perry party made such a big deal about this entire thing, only for there to not be a grievance filed and a financial resolution reached instead, it sounds like the Blackhawks are getting some sort of a salary cap charge. They're getting charged for making this as big of a deal as it was. And I say it was a big deal because... Pretty much, we were talking about this for a good amount of time. Hey, Corey Perry had his contract terminated by the Blackhawks. Was it proper? Was it not? Was it illegal what he did? No, it wasn't. It was inappropriate, but not illegal. Was that really bounds for termination? Is that proper? Yada, yada, yada. And because this was a big deal, it seems like the NHL is going over to Chicago and saying, hey, you guys made us a problem, so we're going to charge you something for your salary cap here because you gave us some issues. Because, hey, if there was a grievance filed, then we would have seen about it. We would have seen an entire process go down, maybe a third party coming in here to evaluate what happened, but no grievance. It's just a financial resolution instead. And I will say, there are a whole bunch of replies that don't really seem to understand that. They'll get rewarded with another lottery pick, yada yada yada. People are saying, oh, Vegas is going to get $5 million in cap space out of this. Maybe they should be excluded from the top 10 draft picks this year. There's a lot going on in regards to this, but realistically... The idea now that the Chicago Blackhawks are facing a salary cap charge because of the entire Corey Perry fallout situation, that is kind of funny, to be honest. I mean, rereading the tweet, as a result between the settlement between Chicago, Corey Perry, the NHL, and NHLPA. So, essentially, when Corey Perry was terminated in the first place, the idea floating around was that because this entire thing was kind of violating of the contract, there was some dispute as to whether or not Corey Perry's financials were working themselves out properly. We did make the video earlier on saying that after Corey Perry got canned by Chicago, he actually did owe that organization some money because they paid him a salary bonus at the beginning of the season, that in which was more than the amount of money that he should have been owed based off of his time played in Chicago. He only played X amount of games played only worth about $500,000 in salary, so the bonuses that he had signed actually were a little bit over what it was that he was supposed to be able to get. And yeah, that was a pretty big deal, I would say. Very odd stuff going over for Corey Perry with his $4 million AAV cap hit with Chicago. 
But to end off this video, I wanted to go out there and read some extra Reddit comments in regards to this entire situation because this was posted and this did garner a pretty significant response. Here is what JD397 said. This is so bizarre. I really wonder what was going on behind the scenes because the NHLPA didn't file a grievance in the original window after the termination and then they fought to get extended an extra two months and still didn't file anything. Mental Engineer tries to shed some light on this. I'm a union representative. This isn't particularly unusual. The union says we're interested in an informal resolution, but we don't want to give up the right to file a formal grievance. Let's extend the deadline. And the employer agrees because they'd rather settle things off the record. Also, timelines are often suspended if the union needs information from the employer to decide whether or not they want to file a formal grievance, and they're waiting to actually get that information. This is pretty much how it works. Yep, it's similar to when you get sued. The lawsuit tells you that you have 21 days to respond, or whatever your jurisdiction statutory response period is. Your lawyer files a response within 21 days and says, we have been appointed to act for Mr. So-and-so on this matter. We'll file a formal response at a later date. Sometimes it takes your counsel six months to file the formal response, but by filing the initial response in the 21 days, you meet the legal requirement. So realistically, this thing with the response getting handed out and the extension only for there to not actually be a grievance filled by the Chicago Blackhawks and Corey Perry's camp, this feels more so like just a proceeding to extend for the sake of trying to negotiate within the period rather than because they wanted to actually, you know, get some opportunities to file that grievance. If they can settle off the record, off the court, then yeah, sure, they wanted to do that. Every party involved here seems to have been more so in that realm. But either way, I mean, hey, now we have ourselves the resolution. Who knows if there's going to be some money handed out here. There's a settlement between Chicago and the other three parties here. Another comment goes out there and says that, hey, Corey Perry is a saint. He's never done anything wrong, which, um... Yeah, I'm not going to go out there and necessarily agree here. Weren't they unable to file a grievance because Perry refused to do so? That's what I remember from before. I do wonder what they settled then, assuming they did so without Corey Perry. Edit, I at least found this tweet where, according to Gary Bettman, Corey Perry had a grievance pending but not filed, but now it's obviously come out that no grievance was filed in the end. But in December, there was a Sportsnet video that was talking about how Corey Perry was not actively trying to reverse his grievance. This, of course, was from earlier last month in February. Bettman reveals that Corey Perry has a grievance pending but not filed, and that was something that we had talked about a month ago when this initial report was brought out. There also was another conversation here. It depends on what the grievance is about. Usually, you only file a grievance if the individuals involved want to, but you'll need their cooperation to win the case. But the CBA is between the union and the employer, and the union's responsible for enforcing it on behalf of all the members. So, the decision on whether or not to file a grievance is ultimately in the union's hands. Once in a while, the underlying issue is big enough that you have to pursue a grievance even if the member doesn't want to. This could potentially have been such a case. The NHLPA would have been very concerned about setting a precedent for anyone else getting terminated the same way, even if the facts weren't on Perry's side or he didn't want to fight about it. My guess is the agreement is that the PA won't grieve in exchange for an acknowledgement that teams can't just unilaterally terminate contracts for reasons not already covered in the CBA. Ay ay ay, that's a lot of conversation there. So, long story short, we have ourselves no grievance filed. The Chicago Blackhawks are getting themselves a salary cap charge for this entire process going down. That seems to be the settlement here, the result of the settlement in regards to Corey Perry and Chicago. And with that in mind, we can say goodbye because man, oh man, has this entire saga, which took literally months to complete, has this been a doozy, eh? So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Corey Perry, the Chicago Blackhawks, the settlement being agreed upon, no grievance filed, and the fact that Chicago will now get themselves a small salary cap charge as a result of this entire process. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.